As you probably know, the reason why we are here today is that we are celebrating the second anniversary of Henry. So happy birthday, Henry. Yeah, bravo. Woo! And uh, they are starting a party next door and I'm sitting here, but that's not a problem for me. But unfortunately, I have those guys are stuck with me here as well. And it's uh, these beautiful gentlemen are the next in my amazing lineup of uh, great people of Warhol Studios. And I have with me Adam Sporka and Jan Walter. Hi. Uh, responsible for the music. Uh, Jan Walter is the composer and Adam Sporka something like a musician slash programmer who is uh, responsible for the uh, how if, I forgot the name, the adaptive music, adaptive, adaptive music exactly, <laughs> which means that someone is attacking you in the game, realizes that and then sh changes the music so that it responds to what is happening on the stream. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks You're welcome. For, thanks for it's, inviting uh, us it's, It was a long day already. Yeah. As you know, we talked with different people today and I was asking them about their work and we will do this uh, uh, again with Adam <coughs> and Jan. And to support this, we will not play the game, actually. We will play the concert of soundtrack Poljebrady in the back. Mm -hmm. And it's loading. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. And it will, let me just, maybe I have to crank up the, the volume. But it will be there as our nice background melody. It was actually a concert when did it happen? It was last. It was in the, uh, the beginning of September or end of August 2018. Right. <clears throat> Let me just see if yeah. okay, something is coming. That's, that's, that's good. That's, that's Those oh, yes. are the good old this, days. This, yeah. this dude. Oh, yeah. look at him. Ah, yeah. oh, no, guys. What a, yes. what, a, <clears throat> what a happy toast he is. <laughs> uh, how did you end up? How did you get here, actually? How did you hear about the off, uh, the, the, the project? So it's uh, kind of an old story. Uh, Adam called me, I think, in January 2014, and he said, like, listen, there is this game, and they have, they've got, you know, this Kickstarter uh, support and everything, and I knew what he's talking about because mm -hmm. I was, of course, closely watching Kingdom Come from the very beginning because I mm -hmm. liked the idea very much. And we both decided that we uh, should try to pitch ourselves as a team of, of two, as a tandem, mm -hmm. um, we composing him and doing the technical solution and implementation. And we wanted to pitch uh, in the, the Warner Studios. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, he had a friend here uh, who worked as a programmer, I think it was Mikey. Yeah, yeah. Mikey. Yeah. <coughs> Mikey. Mm -hmm. Mikey. And uh, yeah. one day he asked this friend of his, like, listen, um, don't you know whether they're going to do some auditions for the composers or is there anything or do you know something so this Mikey asked and he asked no no, no one else than Daniel Abra himself and he came back to us and he said like listen guys uh, it's it's bad you know Daniel already mm -hmm. has somebody it's probably I don't know some friends of him or whatever mm -hmm. you know how these things are so yeah uh, if you want to try to pitch in you can but it's actually no no it makes no, no sense. chance and also there's like so many so many series already yeah 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 and, and that was the other, another thing that's actually <clears throat> there was like dozens and dozens of of of, um, of uh, series of composers around the globe trying to advertise themselves that is for actually the true studio. that's actually true yeah. because in the time when when the beta was around mm -hmm. so in 2016 and so on i think on a daily basis, I had for sure like five-ish <laughs> composers all around the world yeah. pitching. But the the big advantage of you, and besides the fact that you're really good, is that you're living in Prague, which the others usually did not. They would it want was, to do yeah, the that stuff was remotely. Part of it, yeah. yeah. But the thing is uh, that we even tried to do something. We started to do some adaptive music demo. You know, well, we have. Uh, wrote, wrote in so, so many so many papers with questions and answers and whatever like uh, our own kind of design documents for the music for this game I really really wanted to do this like a lot like I was like oh come on this is like the best ever project for me you know in the universe like mm -hmm. if there is one thing a game if there is a game RPG if there is an RPG it's this one because mm -hmm. you know Bohemian epic wonderful historical and, and, and all, this, all the things so yeah, when this uh, this uh, friend of, of Adam's, uh, when Mikey told us that uh, Daniel already has someone in mind, it was a bit of disappointment. I was like, okay, well, okay, it just we gave up. And the next day, I've received an email from uh, Daniel uh, 
saying like, um, my name is Daniel Wawra and I'm working on this game <laughs> and I would like you to be the composer for, for, for it. And I, at first I thought it's like kind of some, some prank, you know, some joke or something. And then I realized it's actually for real because there was his phone number and I called him like within 20 minutes or something. <laughs> and yeah, so th this is how, how, we, how we ended up here. And it's thanks to uh, another two things, they happened by accident. Uh, First, uh, Daniel is uh, a big uh, death metal and metal fan, you know, fan of a very hard music. And years and years ago, I can't remember, 2005, perhaps 2007, something like that, I co-orchestrated and co-arranged a big concert of a uh, Czech metal, legendary metal, metal group called Arakain. Mm -hmm. And Daniel, of course, was aware of this. He saw it and he liked the arrangements very much. So because he likes the, this kind of music. And then uh, about 2011 or something, I've met, again by total accident, uh, his uh, girlfriend, Daniel's girlfriend, uh, on, mm -hmm. on a holiday. Yeah, I was there with my family, she was there with uh, friends. And uh, we were just chatting for a while. And she was like, well, listen, if you're a composer, you should give me some portfolio and I should give it to my boyfriend. You're mixing uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a mixtape. Mix because, you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, mm, yeah. right, maybe. And, and, um, so what is he doing? And she's like, well, he is, is making games, video games. I was like, really? Oh, what, what kind of? And she's like, well, for instance, he was doing Mafia. I was like, ah. So, yeah, thanks to these two things, he knew about me. And, and he told me that then that like years before he contacted me, he already knew that it's going to be me. So this was like uh, like incredible uh, mm -hmm. coincidence. And I instantly told him that I would like to bring in this guy because yes. he has this uh, a, a very, very unusual and very specific set of skills, both in musical and techn technical and technological and scientific, you know, branch. So I said, like, we should do this together with Adam and yeah. then we can do uh, both the in-game part and, and the cutscenes. Mm -hmm. That is actually very interesting because you're not only friends but also family, right? Yeah, so cousins. cousins. He's, cousins. He's two days older. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's, you see. You're, you're cousins, which is interesting, but uh, while you are a composer per se, so mm -hmm. doing the music, you have, as uh, Honza said, a very special, unique skill uh, as well, which is music and composing the same time, or having yeah, a, yeah. a touch for music. Right, right, right. How did that come together? I am um, always, I've, I've been always interested in interactive audio, interactive sound, right? And so I focus on whatever sound-related things are in video games. So I'm interested in the sound as an interactive medium, like what what you can do with it, how you can actually use it to, I don't know, tell a story show some pictures, you know, how, mm -hmm. how, how you make people feel certain things. And, uh, and music is, uh, is the most interactive sound there is, mm -hmm. right? So that's, the, that's my main focus because mm. that's, the, that's, the, that's the highest form of, of audio engineering, I would say. But we are from the music family, obviously, right? Yes, I mean, and like, the, really like, I mean, yes. like, Adam's, Adam's father was, uh, was a wonderful singer. Uh, classical singer tenor, yes, he and was and uh, he also good. acted as as a director of a choir. You know, yes, he was. Uh, he was the he was the, Ricardo Sporca was the director of the Prague Philharmonic Choir. Mm. Was, uh, for so he, he was like a very very good musician yes. and very very clever man. Even another another, another cousin of ours is, is like a professional musician. <laughs> yeah, so, so like all musicians, musicians everywhere, like yes. you know. And you keep it rolling because even yeah. your wife <laughs> is. Uh, you are right. True. Actually, yeah, my wife yes. is also she's a professional yes. musician. Professional too. musician, a fantastic and she's one. also she is also in Kingdom Come Deliverance, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, you're right about that. <laughs> yes, uh, there was the DLC Women's Lot, which I liked very much. It was the last thing we had done uh, for Kingdom Come. And uh, I needed this uh, fragile, gentle, uh, vulnerable uh, woman or girl's voice. So I, well, at first <laughs> I was thinking about some operatic singer and I was like, no, she was gonna come there, you know, like this. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and we totally spoiled it. So, so I asked my wife and she actually has made all these demo recordings uh, in our kitchen. So <laughs> I was in temptation uh, just letting it be like and using it from our kitchen, but finally we recorded it in a professional studio, of course. Yeah, so she actually appeared on, you know, Kandu Yes, and she's, she's the voice, if you can remember the the Apple song, the Jablichko, the Czech one. The, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's her, and she's the voice in the Johanka quest lines, the entire theme. Yes. Of the Johanka and exactly. even even Teresa as well, mm -hmm. but this the yes. song you can hear, mm -hmm. especially at the end of of the of the Johanka quest line when things go 
up well, or down depending on your choices then okay. you hear the sounds and that's also her singing or doing the mm, sound so that's that's pretty nice uh, Sexy Biscuit is asking because Sexy oh. Biscuit every, oh, everyone to him, by the way. Hey. <laughs> everyone everyone knows uh, Sexy Biscuit and she's okay. asking we if, do. <laughs> uh, she's asking if it's okay uh -huh. uh, to use yes. uh, the sounds uh, in her videos and I of course yeah, it's okay I mean yes, sure it's an sure. honor to be in totally. the Sexy Biscuit uh, news. Okay. <laughs> Black Bunik is asking, which Black Bunik is a oh. great guy and oh, he's, oh, yes. he's uh, doing um, cosplay and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's asking, when, Adam, when will you finally upload the uncompressed version of Full KCD oh. soundtrack to Bandcamp? Oh. Smiley face. Yeah, because soon. <laughs> yeah, very, very soon. Like we are all, all soon. 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 You had to start from nothing, I guess, right? So had zero. How, how did typical, everything yeah. start? I mean, Daniel was approaching you, say, listen, uh, yeah. Jan, you are very good at what you do. I need music. Well, uh, we had a first, uh, sorry, we had a first like design session solely with Daniel because that was where I told him that uh, I want to do this as a team of two together with Adam. And this first meeting, it happened over a beer because we are Czechs, of course. Hmm. It was in some uh, well, typical nice pub with a good pilsner. And Daniel actually came in with a very clear uh, vision of what he wants. Hmm. Because that's, that's, that's so typical of, of him. And he's also very good at explaining and describing uh, uh, what he wants and how he wants but it. But did he sing it for you? Or no, 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 no. <coughs> I need something like... <coughs> that's the thing. Da -da, but not too much. I mean, that's the thing. Because, uh, yeah, either you can play the music and say like, this is what I want. But then, how can you play music which doesn't exist yet? Or you can uh, describe it somehow with your words. But the words can't describe music much easily. So mm -hmm. it's actually very complicated. So either you're a professional musician and you use these terms we have to describe things mm -hmm. and, and, and happenings you know, and situations in, in, uh, and states, how to put it, mm -hmm. in, in the game, uh, in the game, in the, mu in, in the music. Or you don't, and if you don't, then typically people fail to to explain what mm. they want, how they want it. But Daniel somehow always manages it. Like you know, he uses like five or six words, and I exactly know what to do, or Adam exactly knows what to do. This is like uh, it's 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 actually quite ex extraordinary, and it's one of one of its many ad advantages. Mm -hmm. And also, he loves music. He loves working with music in in uh, his games. And uh, yeah, so he came into this pub, and and after you know he had, he took a first sip of a bit of a beer. He said like, okay, uh I want kind of music like in a style, like not too much of a Zimmer, more like John Williams, you know, but also mm -hmm. 60s, 70s, you know, the Czech New Wave, mm -hmm. you know, Liška, Fischer, and these, and so on and so on. And he was talking like for about two or three minutes, and he actually uh, uh, described the, the direction he wanted uh, the music to be heading quite clearly. It was also the direction I would wish best uh, to, to follow. So okay. it, it matched totally perfect way which was which was cool but you need to but you do have to explain uh but describe precisely is the emotion you want the music to bring in to kick in to help mm -hmm. build you know either the tension or the emotion sorrow whatever it, that is and at this you know daniel is very good at describing mm -hmm. these things yeah. so while while you were more outside the office than mm -hmm. inside the office for you it was the other way around so for how did you yes yeah, so what what's what's your part on the music right. what's what's the connection to the right, game right, right. and uh, what did you do in so, the past uh, two years? <laughs> while we were working on this on this uh, pitch, we, this pitch exercise, so to say, mm -hmm. uh, we created this virtual Kingdom Come Deliverance level, which we called Vohlomyslice. Yeah, Vohlomyslice <laughs> was uh, it means was, nothing in Czech. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't mean in, anything. Not, right? not just, other you know, language, but you know. it sounds a little bit like like Skalit, so it will be probably yeah, like 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 or, or something like that. You know, Vohlomyslice. <laughs> it doesn't exist, you know, on, on the map or anything like that. But did you check it if it's existing um, or not? It doesn't exist. It, it doesn't we check. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Not even in Poland or somewhere. Oh. We didn't check it. Maybe in Poland, maybe, 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 maybe <laughs> even yeah, Poland is a big country. They might even have some right, one right. or two more Holomish yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe more of them. But yeah. the point was that we actually had this village where anything could happen, when people could talk to each other, where there was uh, where there would be different times of the day, when there would be different let's say parts of, of the village. There would be pubs. There would be there would be uh, you know uh, sleeping uh, quarters. There would be everything, right? Church, so churches, churches, yeah, was church, or uh, there would be you know. a river. Mm -hmm. All these important things. And we were thinking, okay, so what happens when we go from play, from 
from point A to point B? How do we go? How do we transition our music from from, from that music to the other music and stuff like that? Save your thought because this is my oh, oh, yes, by far this is the thing. This favorite is the thing. Fav by far favorite. Come on, guys! Uh, it's not that difficult as it looks like, guys. But it's now it's this. this let's is the let's enjoy this for a second without any sounds. All right. Definitely, yes, uh, as you just said what I thought, this is a, by far one of my favorites. And, and, and that's an interesting fact, not, not necessarily in the game, but when I was seeing it live, and with your energy, which you, because you, you're sprawling of energy <laughs> there, it's like you're, you're one with the violin there, <laughs> you are the violin. If you want to understand the violin, you have to become the violin. <laughs> and uh, having you standing there playing it, that was like, that was right in the, right in the field, that, that was amazing. If, if you have a, a live concert, you need to, you know, think about many things, such as like, you should serve the fans, the biggest fans. That's why, for instance, the well, it's it's on the very end of the video. It's it's the opening music, which always plays when the build starts in the game. Because I was like, this is the gift for the gamers, for our mm -hmm. fans, for everybody. You know, you also want to depict the story. You also want to show, you know, the different facets of music. You know, which is uh, mm -hmm. the in the in-game, like what's the villages and what's the towns and what's the night and whatever. But also because it's a concert, you need to have something which resembles a virtuosity, even if, as I said, it's not that difficult as it looks like. I'm not a you know I'm, I'm not a suicide person, right? So uh, I just uh, you know I composed it the way I will be able to play it. So. I bet I bet Cristiano Ronaldo also says it's not that <laughs> difficult to shoot. You know, to well, I think interesting comparison. Yeah, Thank you very much. That's what that's what makes uh, music in a concert really really super interesting when when people you know. When you have, when you leave enough clues mm. for the people to understand that it's good, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. <laughs> because I have seen, I have seen many very, very, let's say, complicated performances, right? Mm. And but which were super, super complicated and super, super complex. But you don't even don't know like what is the, like when when you have some 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 novel musical instruments, right? There is no connection between the actual, let's say, what how the instrument looks like. What the person does on the stage and what you actually hear, because you cannot really read that. You, there, there is no, there is no clear, there is mm -hmm. no clear, mm -hmm. this, like link between what, 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 what is what you can hear and what you can see. Mm. And when you have, when you are making game audio things, I, I found out. Well, I, this was not me finding mm. that out. This, the, yeah. everyone knows that. Mm. That everyone. the sound needs to even really, you. Yeah, <laughs> everyone knows that. Yeah. So, so uh, it's really important that the sound closely follows what's in the picture mm -hmm. and yeah. gives you something else, but which is connected to the picture, but gives you some additional. Is that like the the, the, the mm -hmm. frightening violin in horror movies? Like mm -hmm. e e e e e you say, oh God, I something think, yeah. is happening in a second. Music essentially builds up. You, you essentially build up a language, right, for your for your title somehow for your for your game, and then you. You teach the language to your to, to your to, to, to your listener, right? Mm. And then you start using that language in order to communicate. I, re I repeat the same uh, theme with, in, in the same style and the, the same the same uh, voice, the same mm. uh, voice soprano, but with of course with completely different accompaniment and different feeling in it, different emotion. So this is what Adam actually described. Right? Like, like yes, yeah. you you actually define your own language. You define things you uh, want to do. Uh, in your own soundtrack, and then you can start using it, you know, and, and mm -hmm. actually build the dramaturgical things on it. But on the technical level, I was I was then talking to to scripters to understand how game can signal our adaptive music engine that we have developed with with with, with Honza. 
and how, how the game can actually communicate different and important states like variables like time of the day. Uh, health of Henry, you know, all these kinds of things, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, and then so that our engine could actually respond to all these things, right? Yes. And there were many, there were many things which uh, we were able to do and some things which we, we, we were not able to do. Uh, for example, how to, how to make sure that uh, the combat music starts exactly when, when the combat starts in the yes. game, because there is, you know, so what, which means like, what defines a combat in our game? Is it, is it when you have the, have the cross there, or is it like some, some other, uh, the technical state of the, of the, of the stuff? So it really was like this kind of a technical thing. And then I, uh, I was, I, I had to make sure that, that the, that the game, that the music from the game is going to be uh, like edited properly and mm -hmm. timed properly. Actually, no, you know, if, if you are in a, well, if you are around the Sansa Monastery that has yeah. its own themes and it's symphonic one, but if you are inside in the, I'm not sure if this is the English word, I didn't check, it's Clausura, closed area, mm -hmm. you know, rest restricted for, for the monks only, uh, the Gregorian chant you hear there, it's, 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 oh, it's, yeah. it's a proper Gregorian chant with yes. all the rules and yep, everything, yep, yep. but it was composed by this uh, yep. guy Gregorian in 2016 or something, yeah. yes. so it's 21st it. century Gregorian chant, but with yeah. all the standards I love that it has to have. You know, then okay. there are these two now, I would say, of, of like fo folk songs. Yes. Even they, 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 they happen to you know become right. uh, folk songs. Mm -hmm. We have been told that people really listen, that just just playing these and, and singing these, you know, around the fire, you know, when yeah, the summer I heard comes, this as you know, well. yeah, drinking yeah. a beer and playing guitar, you know, and just like yeah. singing these these <laughs> songs, uh, um, which which are composed. And also, cool. I have two. Well, I have one one particular one particular uh, uh, Easter egg in the game. Essentially, when uh, monks are singing long enough, once every every hour or something like that, they would they would sing Lorem Ipsum. Oh, that's the yeah, that's this. Um, uh, there's a typographic. Yes, uh, yes, yes, nothing. Yes, yes there's nothing saying just to yeah to, to see how it will print out. What are your inspirations from this area? Well, yeah. Are there <coughs> any inspiration from this? Well, the, the, particularly from this area, there is very, very limited. Uh, there is almost no uh, written music. I mean, yes, there are lyrics very mm -hmm. often, sometimes with tiny uh, hints of notation, but definitely not like full melodies. And mm -hmm. we also don't know what kind of, well, you know, like, like accompaniment was there. So we can only guess from mm -hmm. historians, they, they, they say us what kind of instruments existed already at the beginning of the 15th century. So from that you can start. And then it's more like deconstructing, you know, the first knowing uh, or known music, which is probably like the, the early Renaissance. This is something we already like know this better. Is, this, yeah. The Renaissance music, actually, what we believe is medieval music. Exactly, when you, when we yeah. Hear it, right? Right. Which yeah. is actually this. <laughs> yeah, actually, you, you spoiled our solution, but that's, that's oh, fine. Sorry. It's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> At first, we were thinking like, what we were gonna do, and I was like, okay, we have to deconstruct the, the early Renaissance music maybe mm -hmm. somehow, and you know, strip it of, of of all the you know novelties they appeared uh, and so on. But then I realized, actually, you know. Uh, everything in this game is realistic, as realistic as you can uh, have in a game in order still to make it fun enough to play, of course, mm -hmm. because because that's that's higher than, than, than the realism, you know, the, it has to be fun, it has to be yeah, interesting, of course. interesting, it has to be a good thing to do. And yeah, that's, by the way, a very often question from journalists and other people, how often we sacrificed fun for, reason, for realism, and I don't think we ever did that like I would said, say never. Oh, that would be the funnier the better thing but we rather keep it the other way so. yes it must be must be uh, must be entertaining must be, you know yeah. it must be adventurous it must be an experience for the player if it doesn't and in the uh, end it's just one big sense. compromise anyway if, if somebody wants to transcribe it in, you know, in, into sheet music and put it somewhere like to me, I don't give a shit. I mean, like, I'm, I'm absolutely happy with it and just do whatever you want with it. Uh, of course, you can't sell it, you probably know that. But if it's just for your own purpose, you know, to play it somewhere, absolutely in, yes. In other words, if and you if want you to it use somewhere. it, yeah, if you want to use it for your channels or whatever, I think yes, you're totally more, more than happy. Also, cool. there is this guy, his name is Random Innkeeper. Oh, yeah. And oh, yes. yeah, he, he uh, if, if you haven't checked this, I mean, like, I love it. I'm, I'm, uh, Random Innkeeper is yeah. amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I don't get his jingle together again. Cooking. Cooking medieval dishes in a modern way, something, <laughs> something like that. Like that. Uh, we love cooking, so if there is our music and the cooking, that's a fantastic combination. I like, I like, to say, I like love eating it. more than cooking, but yeah. yes, but that's just an yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, well, the perfect combination again. Perfect combination. You cook, he eats. The funny thing is, if you listen closely to the background music playing there, oh, uh, the, the back, not music, chatter, the background chatter, it's actually us or, well, the mm -hmm. team. Once a year, we are locking ourselves into a medieval fort for a weekend, and we have a, a, um, 
um, I don't want to call it drinking contest, but no, uh, team like building. team building, exactly. That yeah, was they call it that, but <laughs> yeah. it's actually like drinking contest. Yeah. Yeah. In those pubs, when you listen closely, you hear our chatter because our uh, there's of course more in the sound department. We have Voita, we have who's else there? Matos. Uh, Matos and we have a new an intern uh, right now. Thomas. Thomas, right Thomas now. intern. And uh, Voita and Matos, or maybe only uh, one, maybe both, they were recording the chatter because it was uh, it's this medieval fort looks like a castle ish little bit it's a huge stone hall so looks the, the the thing that looks closest to a medieval pub and as i mentioned if you listen closely you hear different people chatting about modern stuff i think but uh, <laughs> who knows maybe about some game <laughs> maybe maybe about some game uh i think the best part was when we went recording in Rudolfino. That was a cool thing to do. And yes. that was probably, that was, that was, I think that was the highlight that for was, me. That was definitely like a, a, a huge thing to do and probably highlight at least uh, so, sort of like production wise. If, if I may like emphasize yes. one moment, just one single one. And that was actually, not when the game was finished, it was slightly uh, later than that. It was uh, the, the evening before the game was released. And I remember we were, this, we were having party. this release party. The party was very nice too. Actually, we were playing there, you were playing there with Bakus, oh, we yeah, were playing yeah, there yeah. with a small orchestra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the, this moment was like uh, when uh, it was in a church. It's, it's, not, 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 it, it's not a church anymore now. It's, it's used as a concert hall. It's yeah. used as an as a, as a exhibition place and everything. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, there was the top, uh, top part of, of the church and, and we were sitting there, I think you, uh, some people, uh, then Daniel and, and me and I was sipping a beer and Daniel was like, wait, and he just took his cell phone and he's like, wow, you know, and like, we are the second best selling video game in the world now on Steam. <laughs> I was like, well, wait, but I, I was like, it's, it's a pre-order, you know, it's like, because it's, it, it was impossible to buy it by then because it was still the day before yeah, the release. Yeah. And then he opened it again, like five minutes later, and was like, actually we are first now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was like, aha, uh -huh. so maybe all the things we hoped for, maybe all this, these years, and for us with Adam it was like three, three plus years, mm -hmm. but for many others it was six plus years. For Daniel it was maybe eight, maybe ten years of hard work. So maybe everything is gonna be really worth it. Release. And actually, it looks like people are, uh, we have created something that people hopefully will really love, and it happened. And because the guys next door are celebrating the second anniversary, we also have to celebrate, because uh, the beer is already a little bit pale. Thank you, that's okay. But okay. maybe that's why it's called pale ale. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, so cheers, cheers, cheers. Cheers, cheers. Uh, yeah. cheers yeah. chat. Cheers to you guys. Thank you for uh, being Thanks. with us in the last two years and before and so on. Because I heard and I can hear that the beer is uh, flowing in rivers there. Mm -hmm. And we, will, we surely don't want to miss that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you for joining the second anniversary stream of Kingdom Come Deliverance. Stay medieval, stay with us. Follow us on our social media. Go on uh, Steam and all the other shops and buy KCD or get it for free on the Epic Store. See you soon. Bye. See ya. Thanks. Thank you Bye. for everything. And good night. <laughs>